We all speculate about the meaning of our dreams, but are dreams simply re replaying the experience of our waking lives, or do they have a deeper meaning about our life? Today I want to discuss some of the latest sleep science which suggests that dreaming actually puts your brain through therapy while you sleep and that dreaming is looking after your emotional well-being and protecting you against developing disorders like anxiety. Welcome to episode two of Better Brain, Better You trying to cultivate healthy brains and build better mental well-being. I'm your host, Dr. Ben Webb, and thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Glad to have you here wherever you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcast or if you're watching on YouTube. So I think we've got a great episode for you today on the benefits of dreaming for your emotional well-being. But before we jump in to the episode, if you want to understand why your brain health is so important for your mental well-being. I've got a free video and guide for you which you can grab on three insights about the way your brain can help with your mental well-being. You can grab that at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash free brain. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash free brain. And I'll pin that link below in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. So I'd like to discuss some exciting developments over the last few years in sleep science, which suggests that dreaming is really looking after and maintaining your emotional well-being. And then I want to finish up with some strategies to try and help you sleep better if you, if you struggle with your sleep, because this can potentially help you with your emotional health and your emotional well-being. So if that sounds good, let's, let's dive in. So we know that sleep, and we've known for some, a few years now, that sleep has five phases to it in which your brain and body cycles through these five phases every 90 minutes during the night time. And the first four phases are really where you transition from shallow sleep when you first go to sleep at night into more deeper forms of sleep and until you reach the fifth phase, which is called REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep and this is you can tell people are in this phase of sleep when you look at their eye just under their eyelids their eyes are flecking backwards and forwards like this and this means they're in REM sleep rapid eye movement sleep and this period of sleep is when you have heightened brain activity the brain activity is actually very much like very similar to what you see when someone's awake but they're asleep paralyzed as well in bed and having vivid dreams that's the time at which you which you dream. So REM sleep is relatively short, relatively infrequent during the first half to two thirds of sleep during the first part of the night. And then because your body prioritizes this slow wave or deeper sleep, because we, we, we tend to think of this sleep as a more form, a form of kind of restorative sleep to help you recover from activities during the day. And longer periods of REM sleep only only seem to happen in the last third of sleep. So during those final hours, often early in the morning for most people, bef before you wake up. So it can, re it can get cut off this, this, this period of sleep when you don't spend the full seven or eight hours sleeping, which is why it's so important, as you'll see, to try and get those full seven or eight hours for your emotional well-being. So when you're in this phase of sleep, when you're in REM sleep, dream sleep but the brain activity the activity in your brain is much stronger and much more prominent in the visual parts of your brain and in the motor or movement parts of your brain the emotional parts of your brain and also what we call the autobiographical memory regions of your brain so there's memories about yourself and your experiences but interestingly the brain activity is completely decreased and sometimes shut off in other brain regions involved in conscious rational thought, like the prefrontal cortex at your front of the brain here. And this explains why you have these often extremely lucid, but often completely nonsensical dreams. So what are dreams for? What is, what is their function? What is their benefit for us 
Um, well, there's growing evidence in the field of sleep science that they're there to benefit your emotional well-being. And there was a theory put forward a few years ago now in 2009 on the function of dreams by a sleep scientist called Matthew Walker, who, who works at Berkeley in, in California in the States. And you should definitely check out his book on why we sleep, which is an excellent read on all things sleep. But in his original theory, he proposed that dreaming actually has two functions. And the first function is that we dream to remember those important details of our everyday experiences and we try and integrate those experiences with existing knowledge in our brain. And that can often mean that we have some experiences or memories of that day and our brain seems to to seek out connections within our brain that are matched, are consistent with those experiences and try to integrate them with them together to form new memories inside our brain. But the second function, which is what I I want to discuss with you today, is that we actually, we dream to forget or strip away those painful, emotional and often traumatic experiences associated with those memories that we're trying to remember. So in, in essence, we're trying to remember the content, the episodes of a memory and strip away any bad emotional or or traumatic emotional experiences associated with the with the content of those memories. It's a bit like your brain is a bit like kind of reviewing your life experiences and cleansing those memories of any toxic emotions if they've been associated with them. And you can really think of it as a form of of sleep therapy. So this is a a, a very a novel and exciting idea about you know what the function of dreaming actually is. And we now know that consistent with Matthew Walker's original proposal there's there's some good scientific evidence for exactly what he proposed that that now that when you're in REM sleep and you're dreaming this can often reduce the pain of emotional episodes that you've previously experienced so for example in one study which backed up this idea people who viewed emotional images before getting a good night's sleep were less likely to have strong emotional reactions to those same images the next the next day so how does this work well we actually know that when you're in REM we now know and this study also demonstrated this that when you're in REM or dream sleep this is the only time when a key anxiety and stress triggering brain chemical called noradrenaline is actually switched off in your brain so if noradrenaline sounds familiar, it's because it's actually the brain equivalent of adrenaline, which I'm sure you've all heard of. And what they discovered in that study is the extent to which people reacted to those emotional stimuli led to a reduction in noradrenaline during, while they were dreaming during REM sleep. So this is really strong evidence that this dreaming state of REM sleep and a drop in this stress-related brain chemistry determines the extent to which toxic emotions are actually stripped away from our memories. And there's been lots of other evidence to back up this idea. And it's really like that we're, the brain is reactiva- reactivating these emotional memories while we sleep. And, but this is occurring in a kind of stress-free environment in the brain because noradrenaline noradrenaline has been switched off and we know that's associated with increased levels of stress and then you're reprocessing these upsetting memories in a much safer calmer environment also while you're sleeping and also while you're actually paralyzed because that's how you are paralyzed where you're in the in in the state of REM sleep so that you can't actually move in this much safer and calmer environment so it seems that you you dream to forget the emotional tone of a memory but dream to remember the emotion and the content of a memory and because the emotional content of your dreams is always paired with this decrease in brain noradrenaline dreaming can actually help people reduce their emotional reactions so just want to share one way and that's in way and that's possible there are, are many others but there's one way to share with you today in which this process can actually help people reduce their anxiety levels so we now know that dreaming and REM sleep is particularly good 
for protecting you against anxiety disorders like, for example, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Which, so people with PTSD who, who are often veterans of war is, is the most common, common group that suffer with this incredibly debilitating anxiety disorder are particularly vulnerable to traumatic emotional memories. And that's flashbacks of the, of the original trauma. And that can happen while, whilst they're awake, which is in, incredibly distressing for them. And it seems to be the case that they're unable to strip the emotional trauma from the memory of the event. And this leads to, from the memory of the traumatic event, and this leads to recurring nightmares. And, and interestingly, they also actually suffer with incredibly distorted REM sleep or dream sleep as well, which suggests that they're not getting this kind of emotion, this, this soothing of their emotional well-being during REM sleep that, that the rest of us are experiencing. So amazingly, to back up Walker's um, original theory again, when PTSD sufferers are given a, a drug that actually blocks the brain stress chemical nor adrenaline, then they have fewer nightmares and they have fewer PTSD symptoms. And it's actually the case that this kind of whole effect has been tested out and also who, in, in children and adults who suffer with particularly bad nightmares and showing that it can actually reduce their experiences of nightmares as well. And more recent work has shown that people who spend more time in rapid eye movement in REM, REM sleep have lower kind of fear related activity in their brain if and when they're about to experience mild pain the next day. So it's another study that supported this idea. So it, that led to the conclusion that getting sufficient REM sleep prior to a fearful experience or a painful experience makes you actually less prone to developing anxiety disorders and fearful disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, so you can, you can see the incredible benefits that REM sleep seems to have for your emotional well-being. So that shows you that trying to, trying to make sure that you have this period of sleep that you go through this period of sleep at night time and make sure that you're dreaming every night is potentially very important for your emotional well-being. So on that note, I want to share with you some tips based on the latest sleep science of how to actually get better sleep and try and make sure that you get those seven to eight hours of sleep that you need every night and you end up reaching this period of REM or dream sleep in the latter hours of the night. So... So how can we get enough sleep to experience this dream state? Well, you might be tempted to use sleeping pills to get better sleep, but actually they're incredibly bad for dreaming and often suppress this REM state. So that's not the greatest idea for trying to make sure you get a good night's sleep. So I've got some strategies, some more naturalistic strategies based on sleep science, which will hopefully serve you better. So instead of taking pills, Sim there's five simple ways I want to share with you to try and enhance your sleep. So the first one is quite obvious, but often, you know, we forget to follow these things, I think, when we, when we go to bed. is try and make sure your room is completely dark. You're not looking at a bright light. There are no sources of light, like a computer screen or a cell phone. And you not, don't look at a computer screen or a cell phone in the last hours before bed because we know the blue light on those screens actually wakes up the brain and start dimming the lights in your home in the evening and to try and simulate sleepiness. And the second thing is, and this is, this is actually possibly the most important way and the most effective way to make sure you get the seven to eight hours of sleep you need every night. And that's to go to bed and wake up at approximately the same time every single day, regardless of whether that's a weekday or a weekend. Because this helps to signal to your body a regular time for sleeping. And it's no use trying to sleep a lot on the weekends to make up for sleep that you've lost during the week because the, it doesn't work like that. The brain can't repay sleep that you've lost. And the third thing, which is perhaps less obvious, is try and keep your temp the temperature in your, in your home cool at night, maybe even cooler than you think it should be, like around about 60 degree, 65 degrees Fahrenheit because body temperature needs to drop a lot by about 5% before you go to bed 
um, for you to actually signal to your brain that it's time to root, time to actually go to, to sleep. And counterintuitively, a really effective way of, of dropping your body temperature is to have a hot bath before you go to bed. Because as soon as you get out of a really hot bath into normal room temperature, your body temperature plummets. And this signals to your brain that this is time to go to sleep. So, and if you have, if you actually have trouble falling asleep or you wake in the night and you're feeling restless, don't stay in bed um, and stay awake because that trains your brain to think that your bed is actually not a place for sleeping. Instead, try and get up, read a book under dim light or in a different room. And when sleepiness returns, then go back to bed. And the fifth thing um, one that's widely shared, but is actually is actually really, really important as well, is don't have caffeine late in the day or alcohol. Both interfere with your sleep, either by keeping you awake, and that's caffeine. So we know that caffeine has what we call a half-life of eight hours, which means you really shouldn't drink, drink caffeine after about two o'clock in the afternoon to make sure it's down to kind of levels where it's not going to interfere with your sleep. And alcohol... Um, is a stimulant that actually will wake you up during the night, kind of counterintuitively as well. So sleep is certainly one of the most effective things we can do to rest our brain and our physical health. And on top of that, dreaming seems to provide this critical emotional first aid for our brains and, and for us. Okay, so just to finish up, as I said at the top of the show, if you want to understand why your brain is so important for your mental well-being. I've got a free video and guide on three insights about your brain that can help your your mental well-being. And you can grab that completely for free at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash free brain. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash free brain. I'll put the link below in the comments on you if you're watching on, on YouTube. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I'll see you in the next episode.